Hello everyone, my name is Fu Kang Liu. The title of this talk is New Semi-Free Start Clean Attack Framework for Reduced RepMD 160. This is a joint work with Christoph Dobronik, Florian Mendel, Takano Isobe, Gao Li Wang, and Zhen Fu Chao. As RepMD 160 belongs to the MD Sha Hatch family, let me first recall some major breakthroughs made in the cryptanalysis of MD Sha Hatch family. In FSE 1996, Team proposed the first practical clean attack on full MD4. About 10 years later, one et al. proposed practical clean attacks on full rep MD, MD4, MD5, and SHA0. In addition, one et al. also proposed the first theoretical clean attack on full SHA1. In the same year, Beham also proposed the practical clean attack on full SHA0. After 12 years, in crypto 2017, Stevens et al. proposed the first practical clean attack on full SHA1. As for RepMD128, in EuroCrypt 2013, the first full round theoretical semi free start clean attack was achieved. During the crypto analysis of MD Shah Hash family, several techniques have been developed. The start from the middle method developed by Dobertin was used to break full MD4. The advanced message modification techniques and modular differential attack have been used by one at all to break many well-known hash functions. The neutral bits and boomerangs are also well-known techniques to accelerate the procedure to find cleans. These two techniques have been extremely used to accelerate the practical clean attack on for SHA-1. In one at all's work, the differential characteristics are deduced by hand. It is quite time consuming, so automatic tools to search for clean generating differential characteristics have also been developed. In Azure Crypt 26, the guess and determine method was proposed. Then, at EuroCrypt 27, Stevens et al. independently proposed a meet in the middle method to search for differential characteristics. To apply the guess and determine method to, uh, to the SHA2 characteristics, Mendel et al. improved the guess and determine method. And such a method was further improved in FSE 2014. Although many progress have been met in the crypto analysis of the hash functions belonging to the MD SHA hash family, their progress met in the crypto analysis of RAP MD 160 is very slow. In crypto 2019, the practical clean attack on RAP MD 160 can only reach up to 31 steps. The, stereo, the theoretical uh, clean attack can reach up to 34 steps. For the semi free start clean attacks, if the attacker is allowed to start from an intermediate step, the attack can reach up to 48 steps. If the attacker can only start the attack from the first step. Before our work, the best attack can only reach up to 36 steps, and it seems difficult to extend such an attack to more steps. So obviously, our attack is a major improvement over the previous attacks. In summary, we can uh, mount a practical semi-free start clean attack on up to 37 steps, and our theoretical semi-free start clean attack can reach up to 40 steps. 
So from the progress of the cryptanalysis of FRAP MD160, we can know that uh, although we have made some progress, it is still far from the full run clean attack. The reason why the reason why it's so difficult to analyze rep MD160 is mainly due to its two branch structure. So we can view rep MD160 as two pedal layer branches. At first, the chain variables are copied as the inputs to both branches. After 80 steps of computation, the two branches are again merged to generate a new chain variable. Each branch is very similar to MD5. However, each branch adopts a different message expansion. Although the step functions used in both branches share the same structure, at the same step, for each branch, the round function, the message word, the round constant, and the location word are all different. This makes the two branches almost independent. So it is quite difficult to analyze RAP MD160. After 80 steps of computation, the last five internal states in both branches together with the previous chain variables are used to generate a new chain variable, and which will be used to proceed the remaining message blocks if there are. If, if there is no message block left, then they are used to compute the hash value. For such a special structure, the procedure of previous cryptanalysis of RAPMD is composed of three steps. Of course, we need to have a differential characteristic at hand at first. So the first step is to fix a solution for the dense part. After this step, some message words will be fixed. Then, at step two, we will use the free message words to merge both branches. Specifically, we will compute backwards from the dense part to ensure the chain variables are the same in both branches. After step two, the message words are all fixed, so we can only verify the left part probabilistically. If the conditions in the remaining probabilistic part do not hold, we have to return to step two, or even return to step one. Different from the previous methods, we will propose efficient methods to fulfill the differential conditions. This is mainly uh, due to our new observation on the message expansion. To fit with our efficient methods, the differential conditions, uh, the differential characteristic should also uh, have a different pattern. Specifically, we will use the same pattern of the differential characteristic with that used in our crypto paper. Specifically, the message difference is injected at M12. In this way, for the left branch, there will be no difference in the first 12 internal states. For the right branch, there will be no difference in the first 15 internal states. To fit with our efficient methods to fulfill conditions, the right branch should be as sparse as possible. Therefore, we will construct the differential characteristic on the right branch by hand. Then we use the automatic tools to search for a compatible differential characteristic for the left branch. 
For such a way to construct the differential characteristic, we can find a general procedure to fulfill the differential conditions. This is many uh, from our observation on the message expansion. Specifically, for the left branch, X17 is updated with M7 in the second round. Besides, M7 is used to update X42 in the third round. So we can imagine the case that all the conditions from X13 to X14 have been satisfied. In this case, changing M7 will have and compute changing M7 and computing backwards will have no influence on their internal states from X13 to X40. In other words, we can use the degree of freedom of M7 to ensure the conditions on the internal states before X13 on the left branch and the conditions, the differential conditions on the right branch. Specifically, the overall attack procedure to find T-step semi-free start cleans can be divided into three steps. The first step is to find a starting point. In other words, we need to find a solution for X13 to XT to ensure the differential conditions on them hold. Then, according to our observation, we use the degree, uh, we use the free uh, message word M7. In other words, we can exhaust all valid values for X12 and compute M7. Then, we check the conditions on X9, X10, X11 by computing backwards. If the conditions on them hold, we move to step three. At step three, we compute back we further compute backwards to obtain the chaining variables and then further compute the internal states on the right branch and check the conditions on the right branch. If the conditions do not hold, we have to return to step two. If all valid values of X12 have been used, we need to return to step one to regenerate a new starting point. Therefore, the efficiency to regenerate a new starting point will also have an influence on the whole time, com time complexity. Therefore, it's necessary to come up with an efficient method to regenerate a new starting point. We have two strategies. For strategy one, we have two steps. The first step is to modify X13, X14, and X15. Then we update M4, M13, and M1 to keep the internal states from X16 to X35 stay the same. As M4 is changed and X36 is updated with M4, we have to recompute X36 to XT and check their conditions. So if the number of conditions on X36 to XT are small, it is quite efficient to regenerate a starting point with stretch one. For stretch two, we can it it also compose it's also composed of two it's also composed of three steps. At step one, we modify X14 and X15. Then we compute X13 using M4, X14, X15, X16, X17, and X18, and check the conditions on X13. If the conditions hold, then we update M13 and M1 to keep the internal states from X16 to X39 stay the same. So if the number of conditions on X13 is small, it is quite efficient to regenerate a starting point with stretch two. So, 
so in a word, if there is so in a word, if the num so in a word, if there are only a few conditions on x thirty six to x t, we can use stretch one to regenerate a starting point. If there are many conditions on them, we can use strategy two. So benefit benefiting from our methods to regenerate a starting point, the whole cost has the cost to regenerate a starting point almost has no influence on the whole complexity. And we can also compute that the whole complexity is dominated by the right branch. So to further make our to further make our method efficient, the differential characteristic should be as sparse as possible in X thirteen to X seventeen, in X six X thirty six to X T and on the right branch. This is the 36 step differential characteristic we found. Based on this differential characteristic and our methods to fulfill the differential conditions, we can find a practical colliding mass pair for 36 steps of prep MD160 in practical time. And we also can find a Practical semi, uh, and we can also find a practical colliding mass pair for 37 steps of graph MD160. Compared with the previous framework, the advantage of our new framework is that it is very simple and efficient. In addition, the memory complexity is further reduced. In summary, we achieved practical semi-free start cleans on 36 and 37 steps of RAPMD160 and the theoretical semi-free start cleans clean attacks can reach up to 40 steps. That's all. Thank you.